push that down, up, push that down, 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 up, down. All right, yo guys, welcome back to the uh, Bam Cast. Uh, I'm Bam, and I got a special guest for you guys here today. So if you're watching this now, live or in the future, uh, make sure to make him feel welcome. You know, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Uh, he has a real interesting story for us. I've known this guy for a long time. He kind of went missing. He he went AWOL for a while. I don't know what the hell happened to him. Uh, but uh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, everybody, welcome my buddy. Uh, Mr. Hands, the Jamaican. What's up, man? There we oh. go. What's up, man? Okay. Yeah. So what's going on, man? I'm really happy to be here. You know, I'm finally happy that I finally got a chance to catch up because, like you say, I've been MIA for a while, you know? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. back. Can I say, can I say bitches? You can say whatever you want. Yeah, man. This is not. Yeah. This is I'm back, between. bitches. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I'm, I'm super happy to, to have you back. Um, so what's up, man? You, uh, apparently you just got back from uh, overseas. You just got back from yeah. uh, England? Yeah, man. Yeah, I took a trip. I took a trip to to England. I was I was gone for, I, I was in England for, well, in London for three weeks. Mm. And after that, I went to Jamaica for a week. Damn. And... Yeah, so and I I I was in a resort in Jamaica. What? You know? Yeah, I was in like one of the all inclusive resorts. Damn. It was a it was a holiday inn resort. It, it kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> you really selling me yeah. on that resort. Before we go into the Jamaican thing, uh, Jamaica trip or whatever, you know what I find suspicious? So you were just in London, and all of a sudden, Miss Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to put two and two together here. I ain't saying nothing, man. But uh, was it a covert operation? What happened there? <laughs> nah, nah. I feel like. I mean, I had. She did. Her family did so much to black people. You know, I kind of had to wipe her out. You know. <laughs> <laughs> man, the U.S. Ain't, ain't having no. Ain't holding back on Queen Elizabeth. At all, man. They're going in on her. I'm, I feel bad. I was like, was she really that bad? Dude, but she was, what, 96, 90, 100? What? 90, 100. Yeah, I think that's the right matter. Yeah, she was, <laughs> she was 90, 100. So, I mean, come on, man. You got to, <laughs> like, she had to go. But what my question was, is after she dies, mm -hmm. like, what's going to happen to the money? Because she's on all of their money. Mm. Like, we're pictures on all of it. So I was like, okay, is the money going to be kind of out of commission? Or are they just going to start printing more with the king on it, you know? Well, so I don't know. we got a bunch of dead presidents on ours, so it would have make sense to keep her on her even more now. <laughs> Girl, she's dead, you know? Yeah, yeah. but if I was the but, king, if I was, Mr. if I was Charles over there, I'd be like, I need my own bills ASAP. You know yeah, I know. You know, that's I would think that, too. But um, so I found out that they she when I was over there, they just kind of celebrate. I'm not sure. Don't ask me. But the whole Jubilee thing, she just celebrated like the platinum Jubilee. I'm not sure. It's just kind of like a celebration. The only Jubilee thing I know about is Jubilee from X-Men. You know, <laughs> that, so you don't know what that whatever yeah. it is. you don't know what it consists of just like me no i just know that it's it's with a lot of english people getting drunk mm -hmm. and just having a good time but dude, for all of our lives she's been queen you know yeah. so it is like that's all we've known you know oh, queen really? elizabeth queen elizabeth so yeah i mean it doesn't i guess i, I don't really care that she's gone or not don't, mm -hmm. doesn't really make a difference to me or i don't majority of the people so I think um, it's just a chance for them to party. Yeah, what's up, Patrick? So Patrick's in the chat right now. Uh, hopefully we get some more people in here. This is my buddy, up, uh, the, ja the Jamaican, man. I think you've seen him on uh, my some of my early podcasts. Uh, he's yeah. back, man. He's back. He's here to tell us some yeah, interesting stuff. Um, what I found funny about the Queen, though, man, is that uh, a bunch of Americans are talking like super mess about her, but they were talking about like her. Like what? Like she's a colonizer and that she did this and that and like, she like uh, basically had a bunch of countries under her boot, but then from what I remember hearing, and then I recently researched it again, she basically has no power. It's just kind of in name alone. The prime minister and the, basically England has its own separate government away from her. Now, am I right or wrong about that? Yeah, that is true. Right from what, and I'm no expert or anything. Okay. You know, that is true. They have their own government, 
And it, it is really weird, but I think, in my opinion, she, besides being a rack for hats, I don't see what she does. Every time you see a picture of her, she's wearing a different hat, which I'm sure is more expensive than <laughs> anything I own or everything I own. You know what, you know? She, you know what she really did? I bet she ran the uh, Ministry of Magic like in Harry Potter. That's what she really did. <laughs> But I, I heard I heard so much things about her, like she's this horribly mean person. Mm -hmm. And but I mean, hell, I don't know. I mean, honestly, from what I think that I heard, I heard something that she said. I don't I don't know how true it is. Mm -hmm. She was like um, there was nothing wrong with slavery, you know, because Whoa. it was it was legal <laughs> at the time. Well, I mean, if it you're was... talking in legal terms, I mean, technically, <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's kind of so be because she said yeah, that, but because she said that, I'm just like, you know what, fuck the queen, yeah, it's you know, up, that, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But, but she also they all they wanted to keep their royalness in their family, mm -hmm. so they used to bang their cousins and get married to they used to get married Ooh. to each other just to keep it in the keep, family, keep it in the family, yeah. Yeah, so you wouldn't be in the family. That's for damn sure. Man, you don't know my heritage. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Damn, just, I don't like how you lowered that eyebrow, like, in doubt. <laughs> You're like, mm, I don't mean to tell uh, you, buddy, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, that that one, I don't remember the, the, the ginger one. He married to a, a, a biracial girl, mm -hmm. and look, he got kicked out of the he family, and he out. lives in. <laughs> <You see? laughs> they took away all his rights. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's enough about the uh, royal family. Um, I don't know where you want where you want to start with this. I don't know if you want to go into what you did at the Jamaican resort first, or if you want to just jump into the main topic. Uh well, the Jamaica the resort in Jamaica, man. I when I got there, I definitely don't recommend going there. You know, um, it kind of sucked. You know, it's just the service was horrible. My like, internet was down majority of the time I was there. <laughs> And the food, the variety of food that they have mm -hmm. is not that great, you know. So I've been to better, and that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. So usually when you stay, like in the past, when you used to go to Jamaica, I remember you would send us, you were staying with your family, not at a resort, yeah. right? And then yeah, you, so, would, you would also send us some awesome videos of, of all the vegetation out there and all these yeah. fruits, which was awesome. But yeah, how come you didn't stay with your family this time? You just wanted to live it up? Yeah, I just wanted to do something different. different. Like the last couple of times I went, I went to the resort and it was nice. You know, so this time I figured let me give it a shot again because the thing is a lot of Jamaicans don't experience that side of it. It's mm. just the tourists come and experience that. So I wanted to just, <laughs> you, you know, give a it tourist. a shot. <laughs> you want to yeah, I tourist. wanted to live this, the tourist <laughs> <laughs> lifestyle. You know? and, yeah, yeah, and so, but it was it was cool though. That's cool. That it was really fun. cool. But do you, I mean, would you ever go to Jamaica? Yeah, man. I was expecting to go for a certain event that you were supposed to throw, but it never happened or hasn't happened yeah. as of yet. So I don't <laughs> know if you want to go into that because you don't really talk about it much. So I'm not going to ask. No, I don't want to go to that, right, man. See? I don't want to go to that. I think, I think <laughs> once yeah, Tatum, I think if Tatum was, if when Tatum listens to this, he's going to be like, oh, yeah, I know what a Jamaican was supposed to do. You know? ah, yeah, yeah, he knows. Exactly. All right. So let's mark that one off the uh, ask but, questions list. But what you just blinked, you just blinked just then. And I don't know if you remember, uh, remember Men in Black, like uh -huh. the first one uh -huh. when Will Smith went up on the rooftop. And he was like, hey, he blinked like a second and a second a highlight or something. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And it looked it looked just like that. You kind of freaking me out a little bit right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I tend to blink a lot whenever I'm doing these because I'm switching over from seeing what's going on in my second monitor and this. And there's probably lag on your end uh, or not. No mm -hmm. lag. No, there's no lagging on my end. Um, you're just as ugly as I've always known you. So, <laughs> so the chat says, "Ooh, they're trying now. They're trying to guess what what we're talking about, what you didn't want to talk about." And they're like, mm, "Human, human <laughs> okay. trafficking, human trafficking." Yeah, really, really, <laughs> I did that, but I stopped. You know, yeah, he's like, "Sign me up for that trip." It was, 
Yeah, it was dodo trafficking. That's what I did. <laughs> you know, we traffic <laughs> we traffic Canadian dodos. Oh wow, <laughs> they're still around, huh? <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, yeah, man, let's get into the nitty gritty. Get into it. Get into it from so, the beginning. Uh, so I met my buddy, uh, the Jamaican here, uh, through the whole VFX thing. Um, basically, uh, we studied together to start. We studied at the same school, VFX, so if you guys don't know what that means, it's visual effects for movies and 3D animation, that's the type of stuff we were studying. Um, and we did that for about uh, like a year, a little bit more than a year, right, just studying and stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, it's not that long of a course, so we ended up graduating stuff, and then luckily enough, we got into the whole, uh, you know, movie-making business together. Uh, yeah, doing... our first jobs together. Yeah, it was crazy. That It was so crazy because yeah. we... Uh, the Jamaican, me, Ill Will, a bunch of people that have been on my gaming streams and then other podcasts and then just that uh, I've talked about in the past. We all kind of moved across the country together, basically, right? One yeah. after another, like one behind the other. Uh, yeah. One of us got a, a, our foot in the door and we left it open for the other guy to run in, <laughs> basically, which was pretty awesome. Uh, it was great, man. It was great. It was really great. It was, the city wasn't too big uh there was a lot to do but not overly overly whelming you know as far as the city um but yeah we we did that we did that for a few years uh and then we all slowly started dying out <laughs> right as yeah. far as the vfx uh yeah, well not not literally dying out by the way not, yeah, literally. not literally dying out but uh we kind of had it up to here with the vfx industry one by one yeah. And the funny thing is that as one of us would leave, the rest of us would look at him like, man, you put all that time and effort into this and you're just going to leave? You're crazy. This guy crazy. <laughs> and then we end up in the same, you know, boat later on. So, yeah. Uh, what do you want to talk about, man? So basically, my buddy here went from VFX into the a medical field, which is uh, EMT and now paramedic. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Um, tell us the whole. So, tell us from where you want to start. But how'd you get from VFX so, to to paramedic? Okay, so I went to. I've I've been drawing and sketching and everything my whole life, you know. So as as a kid, I, as a kid, I wanted to be a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, I knew that I wasn't really good enough to <laughs> to draw cartoons. And so I figured I would go to, I, I remember back in the day, I would always see, and I'm sure you could, you would agree that you would see like 2006, seven around there, mm -hmm. you would see like ITT tech commercials. They oh. had a ton of them on yeah. TV, you know? So when I, I had dropped out of high school and I went, I lived in, I went to, I moved to Indiana and I decided to get my GED there. And after I got my GED, and because I saw all those commercials, I was just like, hell yeah, I'm going straight to ITT Tech because they're <laughs> going to be able to give me exactly what I wanted to do, you know? And so I went there, uh -huh. worst decision I've ever made in my, oh, in my goodness. life. And we had to hear about it. I remember when we met you later on, and because you went to schooling again. To do the yeah. next thing, we met we met him later on. And he was so salty about ITT Tech. We heard about it every 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 it was, block, basically. It was horrible. It was horrible. So I mean, I did that. I, I went to ITT Tech. You know, whatever it over and done with. So while I was at ITT Tech, I, I told a friend of mine. I told one of the instructors what I wanted to do for a living. And he was just like, well, if you if that's what you want to do for a living, you are probably going to need to go to a school like, you know, like the Dave School mm. in Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was I said I was just like, okay, I thought about it for a little while, and I said, okay, so I graduated, and then I graduated with an associate's, and then I signed back up for ITT Tech again <laughs> to get a bachelor's degree, like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you love wasting time and money. Yo. Yeah. So, so after I graduated, after, I mean, after I signed up, one day, one day I was in class, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Man, this instructor sucked, and this instructor is just garbage." How could you tell? Like, I, you know, how could you tell? Because you know, like at that point, you're still a student. How how was he that bad to where it was even obvious to like the untrained eye or you, or you were kind of seeing like you, there wasn't very much progression. 
No, it wasn't really his work. It was more so, I remember we had a lecture about, about gaming and he was talking about um, Halo. You know, he was talking about Halo and he was saying how Halo was a really good game because it was first person and their first person games are better than better than third person games. Oh, okay. You know, and I'm a huge fan of third person games. So I'm just like, yeah, this dude is really garbage. You know, I don't I can't. And I think it's all based on it's, it's just based on opinion. Yeah. You know? So and plus, I get nauseous when I play first person shooters. <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway, so you just didn't so, like you just didn't like his opinion. And uh... I didn't I didn't like it. And I thought mm-hmm. I just I didn't like his opinion on that as well as I just didn't I didn't I felt like when I the main thing to me was when I, I finished ITT. Mm-hmm. And they taught Photoshop and all that stuff. And I didn't feel comfortable enough to go get a job when oh, I finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I felt like they lied to me. Mm-hmm. I felt like they lied to me about the stuff that I was going to learn and everything. Were so they, I was just like, Did they try to hook you up with jobs? Because you know how they advertise, uh, we got no. job placement, this and that. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, no? Nah, they didn't. I went... I'm telling you, I moved from in, while I was going to the Dave School. I remember going to the going to the office that they had, the school that they had in Orlando, and I was like, "Hey, I'm a, I graduated in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Can you guys help me find a job?" And this guy, he's telling me that, "Oh, you need to make your resume like this. You need to, because you're in animation or whatever. You need to have an animated resume and all." I was just like, man, if you don't get the fuck out of here, you know? <laughs> but I remember when you, one of your biggest complaints when when you were telling us when I met you later on about that school was that you were kind of like, you were like so embarrassed to show everyone your demo reel because you were telling us at that point at up to yeah. from what you had learned from ITT, right? That's what you were saying because yeah. you didn't feel like you had that many skills for all that time and money you put into yeah. it, and you were I remember you telling us that you felt like within block one. The, the, our course was four blocks within block one you felt like you had learned more in that one block than you did your oh. whole time at itt right oh for sure finishing when we finished the first block the f- block one i was better than my instructor at at itt Tech. <laughs> no joke i uh, was huh? I, I, the reason i'm laughing is because i remember you getting our our first our block one instructor to play your demo reel on on the projector <laughs> and you were yeah. just like so mad about it and like explaining to us this and this and this and that you know and and uh just the emotion you had behind it i was like man i'm because i thought about going to itt for animation like we went to go visit the school and everything like in houston and yeah. uh it was either between that and fixing fixing computers you know like mm-hmm. computer uh repair or whatever but uh it, it it was just so high the prices were so high i was like yeah there's no way which i'm glad i wasn't able to go at the time because <laughs> from Dude, your well, experience at that point i was just i was just so young you know mm-hmm. and they, they i think i feel like they took advantage of the fact that i wanted to learn and everything you know they took it i, I remember the lady i remember the name of the lady that that lied to me and told me that you can do hand drawing and stuff here. Mm-hmm. I remember her name. Can I say her name? Uh, she ain't related to me, so I don't care. Oh, her name is Linda McClure. Hold up, that's my, did... that's my aunt. That's my aunt. How dare you? All right, I'm just kidding. This. Like... <laughs> Wouldn't it be some shit? <laughs> and she worked at the Indianapolis campus uh, in, I don't, I don't remember which part. I know it was like, I don't remember, but it was just she sucked as a recruiter man she is she lied her ass off just to get that commission or whatever it was that she got wow. but anyway i i didn't learn anything from there moved on from what the instructor told me you know that night when we got on break we the he put us on break that night and i called i called the the day school mm-hmm. and i left him a message because it was late nobody in the admission was there i left the message the next day they called me back and I asked him if I can come, come, come and get a tour and all that mm-hmm. stuff. They're like, hell yeah, you can come. So I did. Cool. And after that, never showed back up to ITT Tech. <laughs> never. I didn't call. I didn't leave a message. I didn't None send a voice note. I didn't even send a text. I did not show wow. up. All right. So what's up, drummer? 
uh, Lonzo, you might be muted. This is my buddy, the Jamaican. Uh, he's telling us how he went from uh, VFX into uh, EMT and later on paramedic and later on into running his own uh, ambulance, basically. <laughs> What's up? Lonzo? Great to meet you. Yeah, he's, he's like the head of the crew, boy. I'm, I'm super proud of you, man. So you were telling us how mm -hmm. you left ITT to go to the Dave School and yep. you went to Dave School and you never looked back as far as uh, going back to ITT. And, yeah. Uh, so happened? after that, they they sent me a bunch of messages. I oh, and I also had a I had a online class, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've ever tried one of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to go in there and I have to comment on whatever it is somebody say. So if somebody put up some stupid crap, you have to say something back. You have to reply back to like five people or whatever. And I, I hate I hated that. But yeah, I left ITT, went to Dave school. And I, I remember I did. This was around September when I started when I left ITT. And I started Dave School January 1st or January, somewhere January 4th or something like that. And um, that's where that's where we met, man. And went to Dave School, loved it. You know, to this day, I think it was one of the best options, you know, mm -hmm. best thing I did. Thought yeah. it was great. I loved it. The whole experience, and, at least, if anything, at least the whole experience of it. Yeah. You know, the 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 way that they if. If I could recommend a school, I don't know if it's still the same, you know, mm. now like it used to be, but, you know, I would definitely recommend it to whoever that's trying to learn, you know, 3D animation or whatever, if it's still the same. Yeah. I don't know. Especially if you want to get in and out quickly, like if you ain't got four years to just be twiddling your thumbs, like you want to get yeah. in and then get into the industry, uh, that's yeah. definitely a good option to go. Uh, it's not the only option, but there's a lot of there's a lot of pros as to why you would want to go to that school, but I don't know if I definitely want to promote the school just because, like you said, I don't know if it's the same. Uh, yeah. A lot of stuff has changed since we were there. Um, cool. So you uh, did that. We we all graduated. We all got our first jobs, traveled around the country for a little while. And then yeah. you there was a certain point where you were kind of like done traveling. You were kind of like, uh, I don't know if I want to move around so much anymore. Uh, yeah, that's originally where I met you from. You were you were living in you were based in Florida, and I remember I was traveling quite a bit from job to job, and it did get really annoying, man. Like that was one yeah. Of, maybe when you're single and it's just you and you don't mind living out of a suitcase for <laughs> yeah. six seven months on end, it's fine. But if you get to the point where you got to keep either there's two decisions: either you got to keep uprooting your family, and once the job's over, you 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 either got to come back or hope something happens which usually doesn't for like a long time uh depending yeah. sometimes you get lucky um or you got to leave your family for a long period of time and that that part oh man that's that's horrible but um for me it was so i started after i I, I kind of stayed in Florida because I didn't want to go to, you know, like you. You went out to L.A. or Cali. I went, to, I went to L.A. I went to Hollywood. I went to Austin a couple times. And, uh, yeah, just and I went just back and forth a few times. And, and yeah. yeah. That was – how was that for you, man? It's really exciting at first. And you're like, man – like like when I worked at Disney, it was exciting because you're literally the gates are literally opening. You're like, ah, I made it, right? This is what I've been yeah. wishing, hoping for. But it doesn't matter if we were working at the mid tier company we were at, uh, mid mid to high tier company we were working at when we were in Louisiana, me and you, or if you're working yeah. at that company, it's all the same. It, it's it can be gone in a flash, you know. Yeah, nothing's guaranteed. Even though they guarantee you the movie. Like uh, after we were done working on a certain movie, they were like, "This other big budget movie is it's in the can. All you all you guys did so great, it's in the can. You're coming right back. Just don't even leave town." That shit didn't <laughs> happen. So you're telling me just stay here and keep paying rent and also pay rent at home, right? Uh, because yeah. it's that guaranteed. And I was like, "Nah, I see. You. I'm going home." Sure enough, here come the bullshit excuses every week, every week. And then a few months pass. And imagine if I would have stayed there, paying double rent, and, and you know not knowing what was going to happen and then having to come back anyways and yeah. had spent all that money. So it was exciting at first, but then you start seeing that nothing's guaranteed. You, you go in working on these big budget movies thinking 
you know, you, you've made it and you don't have to worry about stability anymore. Even if there's little gaps, it's not, you're going to have a stable job, but man, it's kind of mm. not. It's kind of not, it, not that way. I don't know. Did they go over, tell us about that in school? No. Or did we just kind of ignore it or what? No. For Well, maybe for you, maybe, I don't know what you were told or how you approached it. I, at one point, I started thinking about it and I was like, man, I don't know if I want to be a freelance the rest of my life. I, like, I, I almost quit at one point, right? Yeah. And I was like telling the recruiter for the school at that time. Man, I don't know. Like, I just want to be able to go to my job, have a steady job, go into the office and, and come home and, and know that that job is going to be there, uh, you know, at least most of the time. If I quit a job, yeah. if I have a job for five years and I have to leave, that's one thing, even three years. But if I'm having to leave every month, I can't do that. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, man, this is this is the house of mouse and all yeah. this other dumb recruiting bullshit. You're going to be driving a Ferrari and this and that, and you're not going to have to worry about money. Like, he really, and I wasn't. I didn't. Even, I knew he was like exaggerating. I wasn't yeah. exactly eating his bullshit up, but I was kind of like, <laughs> all I heard was, "Oh, so it, it, I'm gonna get to a point where it's, it's steady, right?" And no, that never happened. <laughs> and I know some people that have some steady jobs, but that I was lied to. I felt like, what about you? You know, I, I feel like I think the what they kind of showed me, and I, I like this part, and I think it's it's a really good marketing scheme on their part showing what companies their their students work for mm, yeah you know? i'm mm -hmm. saying that their students work with marvel disney you know worldwide effects and yeah. all over and blur studios that that's a real and people are going to be coming in there saying yeah. now it doesn't matter what you do on these movies <laughs> it doesn't even matter if you move uh if you clean the floors yeah you stay apart they still put you up on there. The, you, you, the caterers get a credit, and usually above the us. VFX uh, artist. Uh, so yeah, like you, you don't even know what they're. It says nothing about the skill. It's just kind of like a name. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. so. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so after after we got done, after I got done with with worldwide effects, and I moved to Florida, uh, wasn't working, wasn't working for a while. Um, and so finally i tried to do tutoring i, I was doing tutoring for a Be, minute before we go into that can you uh tell them the one job that you hooked me and tatum up with one time or you don't want to talk about that you want to leave oh, that yeah, out yeah let's do it yeah. yeah um i was for some reason i was <laughs> i don't know it was this really shady company thing but oh, yeah. i saw a link online on craigslist so once i say craigslist everybody's gonna be like oh yeah that's gonna be shady uh -huh. but it was a guy doing 3D porn, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was, yeah. And or so but you thought it was a guy, but it wasn't. A, it wasn't just the guy. It was a whole little company, right? Little yeah, setup. yeah. It was this whole. He had a, he had a whole studio set up and everything. But the thing was, we used Daz. You know, I think that's the name of the company, Daz, right? That's the name yeah, of the uh, software we used. The software that we used, yeah. yeah. We don't it have to say the name of the company if you don't want to, because it's yeah, out of commission anyway. Yeah. I, I, don't I don't remember. Think the company had a name. I don't remember. I'm sure they had like a uh, cover-up name, because it was definitely shady. It definitely got shut down. But this is the guy. Yeah. Hey, Drummer, this is the guy. He always asked me about this. He's the one that got me into the porn industry. We were both in the porn <laughs> industry. We were both Boy. porn stars. Boy. Wait, <laughs> because was... of this guy. <laughs> this is the guy who got me, me yeah. and Tatum the uh, job. <laughs> but I remember, I remember when I got Tatum. I remember Tatum used to do a bunch of videos, and Tatum was working. And when he can't, when the guy shut you guys off, Tatum was like, "Man, I was this close to getting back on track with all my bills and everything." And <laughs> he just <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did. It was good money. It was good money for what we were doing, you know. Which was yeah. basically the, we were just making crap animations. Like they were, <laughs> they were so low tier. I remember he Errol or uh, the making here used to get super mad at me because I put a little bit too much work into it. He's like, "Dude, what are you doing? Just get them out!" Like, yeah, just and it was, it, but it was great though. It was great. You didn't do a lot of work. You got, you got the pay was great. You know, and, and you worked from yeah, home. So, this was before remote work from home when it came to like visual effects was even really a big thing. Like COVID hadn't happened yet. So for you to get hooked up with a job like that, 
It's amazing. Yeah, it was. It was, and you guys are in Texas, and it's all the way in Florida. You do the work, mm -hmm. and you send it over. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. That guy was pretty shady. Mm -hmm. You know, he started creating. I guess he was doing the work for somebody, mm -hmm. and the owner, the person that he was doing the work for, that was paying all of us. So this guy, what he did was he created a bunch of different companies, and he started submitting work, saying that it was under another under a different company so he was uh, like he was trying to double down he was trying to double dip they, yeah selling and he was just banking wow he's just like selling the product twice wow basic that's exactly what he was doing and he was making a lot of money so one of the guys that he hired on kind of ratted him out mm -hmm. and um and it just went belly up from there man fuck and, that guy fuck that guy because you know what one of the things that jaded me against the uh, vfx too was that experience i lost my job me and tatum lost our job to a stripper basically because if you remember <laughs> this guy was addicted to that guy was probably addicted to yeah. who knows what kind of substances but he was definitely yeah. addicted to uh <laughs> women and strippers and i guess he caught feelings for one of them and he was like oh here you have a seat you can work at my studio uh bam and uh ill will you guys are out yep that's and he did that all the time all the time Crazy. whenever it's not even it's not he, he liked the women they just didn't like him back. Yeah, but they liked his <laughs> yeah. money, though. <laughs> yeah. Loved his money. Yeah. So, And he was definitely a show-off. But mm. after that company, that company kind of went belly up. I I was, let's say, in between jobs. For, I mean, I'm telling you, for a few months. I was in between probably six, seven months. I was just out of work. And, you know, by that time, whatever, whatever little savings I had, I kind of had to live off of it, you know? Yeah, and. Yeah. My daughter was born in 2015, and I remember after that, I moved. I, I started working in like West Palm Beach at this one company, and I thought it was great. And that company helped me. I, I was traveling. Well, I went to Mexico to Tijuana, mm -hmm. and I freaking loved it. We we were filming in Tijuana. I saw a donkey show in Tijuana. <laughs> Did you really? It was, it was, oh, man, it was awesome. I felt I felt so bad. For the donkey yeah. or the or the uh I wanna <laughs> hope it was the lady. Or the lady. Dude, I felt bad for the lady. Yeah, I would have felt bad when, too. I when, when I don't know how I, I I saw it, man, and I was like, no, no, he's not and the donkey mounted the <laughs> mounted the <laughs> Oh my goodness. Man, man uh they definitely touched the nerve with the uh, chat in the and donkey show. They definitely are excited about that. Man, these guys. Uh, so uh, around that time, like when you were kind of like once that once that job ended, uh, you kind of like went went away for a while. We used to talk like every day, every other day, and you kind of like started like not contacting us so much. I guess because you were trying yeah. to focus on getting other jobs or or what was going on. Um, you kind of just trying to decide what to do. Got busy. Well, when that I was supposed to go to work one day because it was so far and I lived in Orlando mm -hmm. and I used to stay with a cousin of mine in West Palm Beach. So I used to drive to work. I used to drive to work on Monday and I would come back on like Friday evening. Then it would take me like three and a half, four hours to get to work. You know, so uh, one day I was going to leave to leave to go to work and they and I and they called me and they're like hey don't leave yet mm. you know and i was like what that's kind of sketchy so basically they they just had what they used to refer to it as the black wedding for or Ooh. i think it was black or the red wedding i think from Damn. game of thrones <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah so you know, they cleaned like, house they cleaned house or what yeah they just cleaned house oh, you know man. and unfortunately you know i was one of the persons to go you know, and that is that wasn't the first time. So I kind of got used to working in VFX and losing your job or getting fired or, you know. And that's and a good name for it, too. That's what I was talking about in the VFX thing. That's what people don't understand, that those red weddings that you're talking about happen all the time, happen yeah. every show. And it doesn't really matter. Like if you – it's not not for everybody but not, and not all the time. But a vast majority of the time – it doesn't matter if you put your best foot forward and you're producing your best work for these guys and really stepping up. Because if when the show is done, uh, you're all gone. You're gone. Yep. And, and, and even though you're it's promised, it's not like they're giving you notice though. They're tell like you go to work today yeah. and they'll tell you today that you're gone. 
Yeah, yeah. And they even tell you, like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, one thing happened to you and a bunch of people at one of our first jobs was they were, like, telling people they should renew their leases, you know? Yeah. And you were ready to yep. go. And they were like, no, nah, don't worry. We got, like, nine more shows coming in. Go ahead and renew your lease leases. Everybody's lease was about to be up in a month. Would have been a good time to head out, you know, and save that mm -hmm. money or plan out what you're going to do. And no, nah, they were like, sign another nine month lease or whatever. And so <laughs> many people got screwed. They got so screwed. Oh, I, I remember that shit. And, be, and then the next day or two days later, they were like, ah, oh, you know what? Nah, you're all gone. Fuck that, down. that, and that sucked, man. I remember I was on month to month. Mm hmm. You know, I was paying month to month and I was sleeping on an air mattress. I remember one night my air mattress kind of went out and I was in the middle of it and on the floor. And I, and I was like, man, screw this. Because that was like my third one. I was like, screw this. So I started sleeping on the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know what it was with the air mattresses. They would always get the tiniest pinhole out of nowhere. And yeah. And I started sleeping on the floor, and I was just like, "Man, screw this!" I just slept on the floor the whole the the rest of the time. But the mm -hmm. thing was, for me, I kept I didn't have anything that couldn't fit in my car. That's how I was. That's the other thing. You don't have yeah. you had nothing for like not just you, but all of us had nothing for the longest time. Just what you could yeah. carry in your car. Yep, yeah, that that's what it was. And but I so I I worked at that company. They had their the red wedding. And after the red wedding, I was I was out of a job. I was out of work for um, and that one, I thought that was going to be really good because I was on that was my first full time job where I had benefits mm -hmm. in VFX. I had benefits, you know, all kinds of crap. And I loved wow. it. I was on salary. That's a step up because I never I've never yeah. once got benefits in VFX that I was on salary. And I, and I thought that was just great. So I was I was thinking to myself that man this is gonna last a while and mm -hmm. but it didn't yeah. you know the same the red wedding happened and mm -hmm. move on, moving on from there. Oh, before when, be, before you go on, sorry. One thing that people don't seem to understand either they're like, oh, all this moving around, traveling, this is gonna be great. But guess what? A lot of companies that have you do that, they pay per diem. They pay for you to move to relo yeah. relocation. VFX doesn't do that. I would nope. say ninety nine percent of companies do not do that. Nope, it's uh, on your own. It's all it's all coming yeah. out of pocket. There is yeah, no problem. Uh, that and that sucked because when I moved to Louisiana, mm -hmm. I had to I, I got money from my sisters, you know, I got money from a bunch of people that I know just to help me move. Uh, yeah, so but it was it was it was it was the experience was nice, man. Um so going so I, I left that job, they let me go and I I just kinda I just got I got into the point, I got to the point where I was just, I was feeling down and, you know, um, I was feeling down and I just kind of shut myself off from everybody, you know, mm -hmm. cause, and it, it'll hit your self-esteem after a while, oh, you know, yeah. that this thing keeps happening to you over and over. And then I kind of started asking myself, like, okay, is it me? And, you know, is it me that, uh, is my work not good enough or like, what is it going to take? Do I, and I started questioning whether I need, whether I can do this or not. Yeah. But then this light bulb went off like, hell yeah, you can do this. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not you, it's them. And yeah. So I, I found a job on the side. I found a job working at Lowe's. Lowe's, the, uh, the, uh, Lowe's the in lumber the and center. hardware company, right? The yep. Space, like, yeah. Yep. Worked in the garden center. I was making like, uh, I think like ten dollars an hour, you know. <laughs> yeah. So when I when I left when I left that company, when I left the the last company that I was working with in West Palm, the one that sent me to Mexico, mm -hmm. I was I was making twenty five bucks an hour. Oh yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and you were working so, a lot of hours too. So. Yeah, and I went from making twenty five bucks an hour. To go into the lows where I was making ten dollars an hour, you know? less than, <laughs> like less than half. Less, yeah, less than half. Yeah. Yeah. So that that I mean that was a, a huge that was a huge hit, man. It was horrible. I was I felt, and I'm telling you, if you guys ever get a job in the garden center at Lowe's, that shit ain't no joke. I'm no. telling you, it is borderline depressing. It is. Is it because when, of the work or just the environment or what? What is it? The work. Mm -hmm. The work is hard as fuck. <laughs> really? No joke. Really? Bro, I'm telling you. 
I went when especially when they have the they have dollar mulch. I think that's in like May. Mm -hmm. They have dollar mulch. And you have people coming there buying like 200 mulch. Holy <laughs> shit. On you a know? regular. And you're in a big metropolitan area. Yeah. So yeah. And they want you to, they don't, they don't want you to put the, I don't, I forget what it's called, the thing, the pallet. They don't want you to put the pallet on their trailer. They want you to put it on there evenly by oh, hand. Wow. So you have to stop <laughs> 200, yeah. 200 bags of mulch. That is fucking brutal. Yeah. When you're doing it like every day or every, or every other day around, it, it gets tiring. Yeah. And and sometimes you'll be doing that a couple of times a day because wow. you have these people that come there and it's it's one dollar. If it's a dollar, <laughs> I would buy two. <laughs> I don't even have a yard to put it in. I would buy yeah. two hundred. You know. Yeah. But, that's true. But that wasn't even the worst part, though. Mm -hmm. The worst part of working at Lowe's was Christmas tree. When I worked in the Christmas tree tent, uh -huh. and I'm telling you, man. That was the worst experience ever because I remember one night I went home, my hand was like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold. It was it was, cold. It, it was sore. Oh, it was like sore. My, like that. Yeah, it was so sore. Like it was hard to move my hands because I was sawing Christmas, I was cutting Christmas tree, and oh, now the tip was really good. There were nights when I would leave and I would be making I would have like two hundred dollars worth of tips. Damn, you get tips, shit. But the, the supervisors told us that we shouldn't accept tips. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they told us we shouldn't accept tips. And I, and I, I was always saying, like, man, if you were getting paid what I'm getting paid, you would be accepting tips. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, especially since waitresses and waiters, they get tips all the time. Why can't you accept it? People tip their – I tip my bartender – my bartender. My uh, barber, I mean. My barber. <laughs> uh stuff like that you know so why not yeah. tip the guy cutting your tree over there and loading all the 200 bags of mulch up you know but they don't tip for the mulch but they <laughs> tip for the christmas tree and we put it i would put the christmas tree on on their cars and by the end of the day you would have whatever you were wearing there would be sap all over it you yeah. all you gotta do is just throw that away oh yeah yeah so but after I did that for almost a year, and then after that, I started, I got a job while I was working there. I got a job working at a mili this military simulation company. Mm. And while I was working at a military simulation company, that was really good. You know, I didn't get any benefits or anything like that, but I thought, you know, I was there for, it was, it was a contract. It was like six months. Mm -hmm. It was like a six month contract. And I, and they told me they all and this is one thing that they always hold over your head when and for me anyway, they always held this over my head that, you know, if you do well, they'll keep you on. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, you'll go full time. Did they do that with you? I mean, yeah, that happened to me a lot of times. Like, uh, yep. you just just stay, just stay late. Just work this and that. Just, uh, uh, you know, take that guy's uh work and, and and take it with no complaints and and fix it and you know we're gonna we're gonna take care of you and you're gonna yeah. be on that next big budget movie we and come in and give a fucking speech about it and <laughs> that's what pissed us off like it's one thing if they're just kind of saying it but they come in and say hey guys y'all did so well on this movie they gave us uh start it was it was star trek the third one beyond or whatever mm -hmm. uh, that's the movie we were gonna get and we didn't get shit we didn't get shit and that happened so many times it happened so many yeah. times it, it man, it, it should be uh, for some reason. I feel like it should be unionized or something. Oh, definitely, definitely needs to. But uh, that's that's what it needs. That would help a lot of the problems. Um, there's so much burnout. The cra it's crazy how much burnout there is in the VFX industry. Uh, I've seen other podcasts about uh, like one called Life After VFX, <laughs> and oh, really? yeah, and all they're talking about is what happens after you drop it like you're gone kind of like what we're talking about right now yeah uh, but so you're working at this military simulation company yeah. i remember you being excited about that because it was like a government job right it was kind yeah of like, it was government. so um you feel well, safe. the company i was working for they were contracted by the government so they would have like boeing mm -hmm. boeing airplanes that they're coming out with and so we what we would do is it was stupid easy mm -hmm. you know we would model 
model and text her airplane parts. Mm hmm. You know, and yeah, it was it was just super easy stuff that stuff that we could have done like after we finished P1, you know, uh, well, not P1, but block one. Oh, OK. Block one. Yeah. Yeah. After we finished block one, we could have been we, we could have done it. But uh, yeah, it was super easy. But the at the around the time when the contract was ending, I remember. But the whole time I was doing this, I was like kissing up to everybody, like, you know, trying to be <laughs> extra friendly to yeah. make sure. Like, hey, man, you know. Just mm -hmm. be friendly and to ask about see, their life and this and that. Like, act like I was interested. interested. There you go. <laughs> to make sure, like, so if anything happened, they can just say, "Yeah, we're definitely gonna keep that guy on," you know. Yeah. And so one day, one around the end came, and my contract was up, and they came to me. They were, they were like, "So, you know, what you're working on right now? Uh, we want to, we want to know if we, you can just hang on." just stay until Friday. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll definitely stay. Cause I'm thinking, Hey, if I do this, they're going to have me stay and they'll probably keep me on full time or whatever, you know, say he was such a good person to work with and mm -hmm. everything. Friday came. They were like, red wedding, you. red wedding. Yep. Here's your invitation. Bring, bring yep. a plus one. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, it was, it was, bam. It was horrible, man. And, I, that's, and that's the crazy part about that one is cause it was, we had heard from some of our instructors too get into government jobs because if you can with yeah. the effects because they never end they pay well poof it was i got the boot it was it was bad and i and i'm telling you i did some really good stuff with them you know and i did learn a lot i learned a lot while i was there but i did some really cool stuff and from that point on i was just af after that after i lost that one i i just there was probably I don't remember exactly when it was that I lost it, but there was a few months where I was just, I was, I, I was just kind of, I wasn't talking to anybody. You know, I remember, I was, that. I, I remember that time too, because I was like, man, this guy's mad at me. What did I say? Because <laughs> I have a smart ass <laughs> mouth. I'm always saying something dumb. And uh, I was like, man, because he would talk, you used to talk to us every day via WhatsApp or a phone call yeah. or a text. And uh, we just goof around all the time, just talking about just fun stuff. You just kind of like just stopped for a while. Man, it it was it was bad, man, because I knew that I had. It doesn't matter what happened in your life, your bills are still going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. You know, and so everything was there. It's like even my daughter, she was there, and I and I started thinking to myself that, okay, you know, I'm gonna have to she's going to want to go to school at some point in time, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm going to have to provide all of this. And mm -hmm. she's expecting a bunch of stuff and I can't provide any of it. You know, and I'm, and I, for months I was just thinking, what am I going to do? What, what was going to happen with my life? And I was, dude, I was honestly depressed, man. Yeah, I, I, was I feel sorry. I, I didn't know that you legit were depressed like that. So I feel bad that I didn't know, but uh, I think, if you really wanted us to know, you would like contact and let us know, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, for sure. Most, but I was, I wasn't, it's not something I was proud of. You oh, know, yeah. I was, I was kind of, and the fact that I wasn't even working, I didn't even, I didn't want you guys to know that. Cause the last mm -hmm. time I remember I spoke to you guys, it was about what I was doing or where I was working. Yeah. And then to call you and tell you again, like, and then you probably be like, Oh, yep. It happened again. You know? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's no. what I was used to, and I was I was really over it, man. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about there because I remember a lot of people like back in my hometown. They were like, "Oh, cool, you're working this and that," and and the question would always be after whatever big project I was doing, they're always like, "So what's next?" You know, like all oh, like really like interested and wanting to hear. So what's next? What's the ne what's the the next movie on chopping block? Yeah. And now like, oh yeah, I mean I'm working on something. There's some stuff in the I had no fucking idea what was next because you never do. Like yeah. they're always like. Because in any other job, you know what's next. You know the next one that's lined up. You're, in, you know, <laughs> uh, not this. Like you really do not know. Once it ends, you do not know what's next. Like maybe nothing for six months because that happened to me before. Yep. You know. Uh, yeah, and I have and, a, and that yeah. six months, you're using the money that you saved. That's the worst part. That's what yeah. you're spending. That's the worst part. You're you're sp yep. you, there's no stability because you're too. Even if you have money, you're just holding it so tightly. Yep. Because you don't know when the next payday is coming. 
Yep. You don't want to. And, and that's, that's what was so crazy for me because I would, I wouldn't be making really good money and I'm saving. Mm -hmm. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, all right, when I lose this job, I'm going to have all of this money. I'm going to have to be living off, off mm -hmm. this money. And that sucked. Yeah. And some people, are really like, some people are like, oh, it's just a couple of months. Nah, it could go six months, nine months, once a year. Yep. You know, and you yeah, never you might... know where. And that's the thing. You never know where you're going to find the next job. Now, if you want to. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you want to be single and you want to, I mean, travel from New Zealand to Canada to everywhere in the new U.S. to England, then maybe, yeah, you can have a job. But if you just want to have stability and you have a family like he was talking about with your daughter, yep. uh, you, you get, that gets old after a while. You just want yeah. stability. You, you don't want to be jumping from place to place. If you guys are watching this now or in the future and you've made it, you know, on the on the replay and you made it this far, leave some comments, man. Let us know what you think. Um, this is one of my favorite things that I do is this podcast on my channel. It's one of the things I'm the proudest of. And I really want to do it more often, but without guests. So I'm not as good as someone like, let's say, my buddy Bo Miles, who can do podcasts on their own without the company of a guest. Uh, I wouldn't know as much what to say or talk about. I wouldn't feel as, that it's as interesting. I think I feel like I'm not that interesting on my own. Unless I'm just being cracking jokes and being funny on like the gaming stream. But when it comes to talking about real stuff... I doubt myself. Uh, I could probably do good, but I don't know. I've never tried it. I I did try to record one one time, and I got nervous, and I didn't never release it. <laughs> I got to rewatch that one to see if it was as bad or as good as I thought. All right, all right, here he is. All right, Lonzo's back in the club. It's a two drink minimum, buddy. Two drink minimum. <laughs> what are you having? Okay. So what I'm you were sorry. saying is you left the. Uh, I mean. The government job kind of ended and you were kind of got to would you say that was your lowest point as far yeah. as the way you were feeling and maybe even financially at that point yeah at that point i was <clears throat> i i didn't have anything going on and i was just kind of i was living off of tutoring oh i remember that you're doing digital tutors yeah. Digital yeah. Tutors. yeah. uh i was I, I was doing i was tutoring with this website called wiseant and you just go on there, put your stuff up, and you just people just message you about tutoring. Mm -hmm. And for a few months, I used to work so much that I, I made my car payment off wow. of it, you know, and yeah. it got really good. I, at that point, I didn't, I had no idea how I, how I was gonna make stuff happen, mm -hmm. but I got my car payment from that, and my sister used to pay my car insurance for me. Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> what that, Man, she stepped up. What a sister. That's great, actually. Yeah. Wow. None of my siblings oh. would do that for me. I mean, they would pay it. They'll be, they'll, they'll be like, hit me up next month with the uh, return. <laughs> you know? it, it was it was, it was was great, man, uh, but well, not it was great that she did that, mm -hmm. but the the stage that I was in, it was it was horrible. Yeah. You know, I had, I was, so on, on a day, on every, every day, I was trying to tutor. And at the same time, I wasn't, I wasn't social, you know, I remember that. I, I was, I was depressed. Yeah, you used to game with us all the time too. game with us, talk with us yep. and all that. Ended, and I, like it all ended. And you said you were busy, but now we're seeing that. Yeah, that was true as well. But then when you weren't busy, you kind of like, you just weren't in the mood. Right. But, but you got to understand, Bam, is it's like I, I was rethinking. I was kind of questioning everything. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I man. was doing, yeah, I've everything. You know, you know how I'm always joking and laughing all the time? That's uh, a lot of that is just to cover up what you were really going through. <laughs> like, it's, it's true. It's yeah. like, I'm just, I'm always acting an ass or saying some dumb shit, right? To make people laugh. But <laughs> it's kind of to avoid my real life problems sometimes. Um, so, yeah. I never, Man, I never was... share that on. I never share any of it on stream. If I feel depressed, I don't stream. Some people say that they stream or they do stuff on online because they're depressed. I, I stay away from it. If I'm, if I feel that bad, I don't want to be here. You know. So, so why, why don't you? So if you're going through, because I know people love drama, especially mm -hmm. when you see other people's drama. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you? Why don't you share it? Or because. 
uh, when I started this particular thing, it was all about entertainment or making people laugh or having fun. Uh, so I yeah. want to bring that here, you know, uh, especially my own stuff. Then it gets too real as well if it's my own stuff. I'll talk about other people's shit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But, uh, but don't you think that some of your some of the streamers or the your viewers or followers would want to see some drama? Stuff? I mean, you're probably right. I mean, everybody, if you watch a show like Big Brother or you watch uh, The Real World, uh, yeah. they always bring somebody in for drama, right? But right. that's not. I don't feel like that's my strong suit. Uh, but you're right. <laughs> that might be. That might have been the thing I needed the whole time. I ended up uh, over here crying on camera and shit, and everybody's uh, like hooked. I got a hundred thousand viewers overnight. I'll try one day. Yeah. <laughs> what? You gonna try it? Nah, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. Well, hear, I don't. I think I don't like hearing people bitch about their life. Uh, on, you know, on stream or stuff. Now, if it's somebody's podcast and I'm actively going to view their podcast and they're telling you about the problem, that I'm looking for it. But uh, okay. But I feel like I'm. My face is. I'm putting the front up of entertainment and laughing and fun. Like if you just yeah. like if you watch some of my stupid highlight videos, that's that's where I get the most joy from is is making people like laugh and yeah, you know stuff like that. So uh, that's just my brand, I guess. So. Okay. Uh, all right. So to to go into so after like in that whole phase where I was kind of considering, mm -hmm. man, I was thinking. I was thinking about a bunch of things like, okay, maybe I could go into the military, you oh. know? Yeah, I was thinking if I could go into the military and I don't know, for some reason, I thought I knew a guy that went to fire school, that went to school to be a firefighter. Firefighter, yeah. And, and he didn't do such a great job at it. And I remember I dropped out of high school, you know, again, and, and honestly, I always thought I was stupid. I, on it, really? I always thought that. Huh? I said, really? I, I said, how come? Because whenever, ever since I know you, you're, you're, per, you're intelligent, you're well spoken, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that you just, you kind of just, you have a certain view and opinion on stuff in life, and I always thought you were super intelligent. But I, but the thing is, and the way, and that really leads me to another point. Like you, you see yourself differently than the way people see you. Mm, got you. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I always thought I never thought I was smart enough because I never did. I never got a honor roll once in high school. Mm. Never. Yeah. Never, never did. And it was. And I'm sure some people watching this like, man, he's stupid as shit. Not. And you got. <laughs> if you if you never get a honor roll once in high school, yeah, yeah you dumb as fuck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's probably because you so, weren't interested. You just weren't interested in those topics. Because when it came to stuff most, you were interested in, you passed with flying colors, which is what you're about to tell us. But yeah, go ahead. And, and that's what happened. So anyway, I went to, so I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go to fire. I'm going to be a firefighter. So I went up to the school. I went to the school and I was like, hey, um, I'm, I'm interested in becoming a, a firefighter. How do I go about doing that? And they're telling, they told me that in the state of Florida, in order for you to be a firefighter, you have to be an EMT. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I was just like, fuck, I can't, I don't want to go and be no damn EMT. That's medical. And that's wow. a lot. And for those who don't know, EMT is emergency medical technician. You know, and I was like, man, that's a lot of studying. You got to yeah. learn about like the body and stuff. And there's only two places on the body that I care about, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on the female body that I care yeah. about anyway, you know? So yeah. I was like, but I was like, <laughs> man. And so I, but it took me, it took me a little bit and I made my mind up and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to go do it. So I signed up and at this point, I was I was applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. I was applying for jobs, and I got a job at Publix. Oh, I remember that. That's when you started contacting me again. <laughs> <laughs> I got a job at Publix, and and mm -hmm. so while I was in EMT school, I and I I got a job working at Publix, making like thirteen something mm -hmm. dollars an hour, like thirteen seventy five, yeah. and. To tell you the truth, to this day, that Publix is the best company I've 
ever worked for. Wow. The grocery, for those of you who don't know what a Publix is, it's a, a, a grocery store chain yeah, in, okay. in yeah. Florida. In yep. And it's kind of like Kroger or mm-hmm. I don't know any other one. Maybe Piggly Wiggly. Do this Piggly Piggly? Wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like the Piggly Wiggly. Everybody knows the Piggly Wiggly. But but the thing though, Publix is if you guys don't know Publix, Publix is like, let's see, what's the I don't even know. When it comes on the when it comes to customer service, mm-hmm. Publix is like top notch. It's just it's the Chick-fil-A of uh there you go. Grocery store. It's nothing like Walmart. Everything that Walmart is, Publix is not. Wow. <laughs> you know? Nice. Yeah. So it you... was. Yeah. But yeah. the thing was, with my personality, working yeah. at Publix, I hated. I hated that because. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be friendly. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> and when when I'm you know because when I got the job, I was still in like that depressed. Mm, yeah it's the worst time to have to be dealing with people and also have a face like a upbeat attitude and people are coming to you in publics you don't when you when you're in publics you don't go up to anybody ask them questions as an employee you go up to them damn (laughs) (laughs) wow yes like i'm telling you the way i feel don't i'm not saying it's not it's nothing bad about publics i think it's great i feel like at public if somebody, if if like an employee see you in the aisle jerking off, you'd be like, hey, um, do you need help? I'll jerk. I'll jerk. Do you need an extra hand there, sir? A towel? A wet nap? <laughs> that's, that's how Publix is. Yeah. But I think it's great. I, I love it. If Walmart was anything like that place, it would be so much better. Yeah. But so I worked there and they were so encouraging the people that I work with, like the management on, oh, and all that stuff. Okay. I was telling them that I was in EMT school and an EMT school is just, is one semester. Mm, okay. So I know that. Okay. three and a half months. Mm-hmm. And I, I was there and it was, man, it, it was, it was hard. EMT yeah. school was, was really difficult. Yeah. Because you it was, know, it was a, unlike the VFX thing, VFX was a lot of doing like you do with your hands, you muscle memory, you, 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 but your yours was actual book studying and right. learning the old fashioned way, right? Yeah, and yeah. and that was and that's what was so different for me because I always I'm just this hands on person, whereas if 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 they told us to do something in school, it's like say in Maya we would I, I would actually go do it, click on this, you know, or whatever. But in medical, if they want to, if you're learning about somebody's heart, like the way the blood is going through the heart and stuff. Mm-hmm. You just have to go over it over and over and over. You can't really see it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So, and that—that's what was hard for me. And then the names, so, the names of everything—it's—it's it's medical terms. It's literally all yeah. medical terms. I remember you telling me that. Like, there's so many and, parts of the body. And that was—that was just so. That was bad <laughs> because. But after a while, and the this, when when I figured out what made it easier for me was figuring out how I learned stuff. Yeah. And before doing EMT, I didn't know how I learned, you know, I, and when I say how I learned, like what process I have to go through to retain the stuff. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. and, and because of that, it was, I was having, I was struggling up until then, but after I figured out, figured out how I retained the stuff, it got a whole lot easier. Nice. So you learned, yeah. you had to teach yourself how to learn, how to basically, how to study. Yeah. I, yeah. And I didn't do any of that in high school or anything. So, mm-hmm. and this, and in this test with, with, with the school now, I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, okay, I'm doing this. It's not just me anymore. You know, I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this for my daughter, you know. And so with all that stuff in the back of my mind, I'm just like, I have to, I have to do this. So I did the school. I, I mean, I, I did, I did very well. I did very well in the program. Mm-hmm. You know? I, and yeah. I remember so you, I, I, I remember hearing how excited you were, like when you were finally getting it and you were finally understanding and, and you, you looked like you were making progress. You were like, I did about it. Dude, it it was it was awesome, man. Like just going there and oh, when I started after I started doing 
like clinicals and stuff, clinicals, which is basically just your internships where you go out on the ambulance and you, you, you actually do stuff mm-hmm. like, a, like an EMT. Yeah. You do the thing that the EMTs would do out in the field. So I remember, I remember my first time, <laughs> my first time going on a call, it was one of my first clinicals and I was at a fire station. And I showed up there eight o'clock in the morning. They're usually 12, 12 hour shifts. Mm-hmm. So I showed up eight o'clock in the morning. It was eight to eight. And when I got there, we got a call saying that some ladies unresponsive, like an 86 year old ladies unresponsive in our, in our house somewhere. And she's, she coded. So they're actively doing like chest compressions and stuff on the lady. Mm. So we, everybody jumped in the, in the, in the fire truck and we went over to the lady's house. And when we got there, they grabbed their stretcher and everything and, you know, went inside. And when I went in there, all I could see was these cops. I saw one cop on the lady just doing compressions and she was wearing like the pins. Damn. She was one with the pins uh-huh. and no shirt on. So they were doing compressions on her and I and her hand. This was my first time that I've I've seen I've seen dead people before, mm-hmm. but in movies and I've seen them in caskets, you know, like when yeah. we go to funerals and stuff. But that was it. So this was my first time seeing an actual like dead person just laying there you know and oh, this, this cop was just doing just doing compressions <laughs> on the lady and i was like whoa this is this is just like this is fucking crazy right now you know wow. I, couldn't, I couldn't believe that i was actually there seeing you know seeing this and but then because the paramedic is the lead person mm-hmm. so then the, i heard the paramedic say the paramedic said to the cop like hey when you're tired, we have a student here, which is me. <laughs> we have a student. <laughs> we have a student. Let him take over, you know. Oh, wow. And the and the cop was like, okay. And I was, and at that at that time, I was thinking to myself, okay, so who's the student? Is, <laughs> am I the student? Am I the one that's gonna take over? Oh shit! I don't want to take over. You they know? literally <laughs> threw you in. They just threw you in there. So. So, and the, this cop, he was just, he looked like he was exhausted. So I, after probably like a minute or so, he was like, okay, at the end of this cycle, it's because you do cycle like five, you do cycles of five. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh shit, I'm going to go in there. I'm now I'm trying to think about in my head, everything that they taught me in school. And I'm thinking that's a person that's a dead person that's a real that's a real person you know Mm. i'm gonna have to go push on this person's chest you know and i'm sitting there nervous i have my gloves on and everything Mm. and i was like shit 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 so i went over there and he he moved and i just (laughs) and i went on the lady was on the bed so i went on the bed and i just kind of pushed over on top of her and i kind of put my hand right in here but I had my other hand, like in my fingers in between. I had my fingers in between. And squeezing. And, well, and I squeezing wasn't feeling distance. on her boobs right yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, yeah. so I was pushing down. So I started pushing down on her chest. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've ever felt this, but you know, when you have, just imagine if you go into your fridge and just, and just, just take like one of those Ziploc bags. Mm-hmm. like one of those Ziploc plastic bags and you put a bunch of ice in it. Yeah. And once you put a bunch of ice in it and if they if it starts melting and then there's some like some water in there and mm-hmm. then when you you feel it. So to me that's how it felt at first. Like I can feel like bones and stuff wow. in there. You know, and I thought that, huh? Like little chunks of stuff like little yeah. yeah. Yeah, it felt like when I pushed down I can feel stuff like that in her chest. And I was just so, but I kept, I kept doing compressions and I was, I'm telling you that, and this was my first time. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was just, I was exhausted. I was sweating because when we're in school, you can't have any, you can't have a beard. Mm. They, because you have to have a seal, the whatever, if you put on a mask, you have to have a seal. So you don't wear, you don't, you can't have a beard. You can have a mustache, but not a beard. Um, So I was 
my sweat was just running down my chin. Man. And I remember looking down on the lady. And if I don't know if you ever look, sometimes my daughter, when she's sleeping, I'll look at her and I, I look, I look and I see like one of her eyes kind of open just oh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I looked at the lady and I remember looking at her and that's what it was. Like her eye, one of them was just kind of open just a little bit. And right in her eyes, right in on both sides, there was this like pool of my sweat. Wow. <laughs> and, and, it was like real know, intense. In yeah, it's real, yeah. real intense, man. And I was just like, that's when I started saying to myself, like, oh my God, why, this is while I'm doing compressions on her. I was like, ma'am, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that my sweat is pooling up <laughs> in your eyes. <laughs> that's what you're right thinking. Now. That's what you're, th that's what yeah. you're thinking. That's what I was that's thinking to least, myself. And the, then, yeah, that's probably the least of her then, worries. Well, well, and then like a minute later, I was like, "You have worse problems right now than my sweat in your eyes." <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's what I said. And yeah. but essentially, we took we took her to the we took her to the hospital. Um, uh, we took her to the hospital, but. She never, she, she it. never made it, man. Nah, she didn't make, so, make it. So because you helped, like, this is one of the things when you tell me about your going into the whole thing, uh, I kind of thought like, whoa, what happened if I would do that now? Like, yeah, I'm not made of that of the same stuff because I couldn't do it. What, what, how did you feel when you found out since I was the first patient you ever worked on, um, when she didn't make it? Cause that was the first time you were ever involved in anything like that. Um, it was it wasn't it wasn't like the movies or anything. You know how if you watch like nine one one or whatever, yeah. um, they get into the patient's lives and you yeah. get to find out about <laughs> nah. It was just like, oh well, we went after that, after that call, yeah. we went and we had we, we had breakfast. And... <laughs> Holy shit. So that one didn't that one didn't affect you, but but I know later on you ended yeah. up getting into other experiences. Um, yeah. And that that one, she was 86, yeah. you know, she was 86. And so she was having, so it, when it's easier when they're older, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a lot easier. Um, but after that, we, I don't, I don't even remember anything else that day, but we kind of just left and we mm -hmm. just went about your business like normal, like, well, yeah. we don't, and I was surprised as to how quickly because everybody else around me, well, it was just basically the same for everybody. And I would ask, I was like, so aren't you guys like feeling anyway because of, I mean, we just worked on a dead person, you know, yeah. that was like an actual person. And they're like, what are we supposed to, you know, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we can't, you know, job. we can't. That's, the job. Huh? that's for them at that point, it was like, that's the job. Yeah at that point yeah exactly you can't do anything and you can't do anything crazy you just got to work on them as they come and then you do the best you can and after mm -hmm. that you know you hand care off to somebody else and then that's it you can't do anything else yeah. but i've seen in like 911 lone star or whatever you know where something will happen and everybody they everybody the firefighters everybody see like see the end of you know like how the story ends for that person and whatever nope that's not the case here buddy Everybody that is not up. the case <laughs> yeah packs once up. you drop them off at the hospital mm -hmm. that's it but so i so i didn't i did the clinical and it was a bunch of them i did you know got a lot of experience and after i did that um so test time came around i took the i took the test for the state and i failed it mm -hmm. So I took the test once and I failed it. And when, when I mean the 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 questions that they ask, they're completely different. First time I'm ever being asked questions like those. You know, they'll they ask you questions like there. Is, so there's four questions and there's two right answers, but you have to pick the one that is most oh, right. Oh wow, so it's really complicated. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, you're right, but you're not you're not like the best version of right. Wow, that's that's <laughs> yeah. a hard way to think about it. that. That would super confuse that's you how, too. Wow. That's how they do it, and it's one of those adaptive exams. Mm -hmm. So, and by adaptive, I mean that if you the that one, you can get 
as low as I think 70 questions and you can get as high as 120. Mm. So it's adaptive, meaning that the computer, if it based on how well you're doing. So if you're doing really well, it can, it'll cut you off. Mm. Or if you're doing so bad, it can, <laughs> it can just cut you off and be like, you know what? There's no way you're going to pass this exam. <laughs> so, like, get this guy out of here. Oh, man. Yeah. Send him back to but, Publix. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, you never, and, and if you're kind of in the middle, mm-hmm. what it would do is, It'll just give you a couple more questions just to see, you know, just to kind of help you out to see if you're going to pass it. And at that, this one, I remember I got 120. Nice. I got 120 questions and I, it just didn't happen for me. And after, after I didn't pass it, I was just like, oh crap. I let, I let myself down. I let my daughter down. And, yeah. you know, so for a while, I just, I, I mean, for not probably two weeks or so. I just kind of stayed out of the books and I just, I was just kind of wallowing in my, my self pity and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. because I did this thing and it didn't work out. And I guess after a while, I just, after about two weeks, three weeks, maybe I just kind of dusted off and I was just like, Hey, you know, um, you can't give up now. But this, and, this, this whole process, the whole, from the time you started it to the time you ended, it took a while uh, because one, the course takes a while. And then two, like you said, you, you had to fail it and then retake it and, and you know, yeah. do that. And then there was kind of like, I think at one point you kind of had to like raise some money or like, or to get, keep going or something like that or no. Yeah. 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 yeah I did. I did. Um, so I, I, after I passed the test, I went immediately into, I went into paramedic school mm-hmm. and I didn't have any money to pay for paramedic school. So I was just kind of going around asking like family, just reaching out. Hey, hey can I, I need money to do paramedic school? I started, I started it, but you have, you have a certain amount of time before you have to, you can be in there for like a week or two. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't have money to pay for it, you got to leave. Yeah, And yeah. that's what, that's what happened. happened. And yeah. So I kind of had to leave, you know, and because I didn't have the money. So after I got my license as my EMT license, then I started working. And because I started working, I was able to kind of save mm. up some money, you know. And That's a cool thing. So because went, Sorry. That was a cool thing that you were telling me about this from the whole experience. I remember uh, in most in most things, if you haven't completed a course, you're not allowed to get a job yet. But for right. this you were able to like work in, what do you say, clinics and uh, on, yeah, as was, EMT, you were able to do yeah, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I was able to work as an EMT, which was cool because you can, as an EMT, you you can do like basic life support stuff, mm-hmm. you know? So you can, for the most part, you if you're working, you can work at clinics giving shots and stuff mm-hmm. and you can work on the ambulance. Like you can basically drive the ambulance and just kind of support the paramedic, which yeah. is the person that's in charge of the ambulance, yeah, you know? And so that's what I, that's what I was doing, but I drove, I worked with a company and the company that I was working for, I was just driving all the time and I didn't want to drive all the mm-hmm. time and everything the paramedic was doing, the paramedic did all the fun stuff. Like he boss me around and I didn't <laughs> like that. <laughs> the, uh, and, and the whole, at, at, at some point the whole goal was you wanted to get that pay bump too because when once you become a paramedic you also get a pay bump right yeah. uh and yeah, you get more you get opportunities that. and just basically so you went you know your goal was like i don't want to just stay emt i want to be a full-fledged yeah, yeah, paramedic. paramedic so so the the when being an emt for me was nice because I thought, and I'm just saying this because this stands out so much to me. When I was a, as an EMT, I started getting jobs. There was so much more jobs, like rather than, and I always use this example where, where, when I, when I was working on animation or films or 3d or VFX, I used to, wherever the job was, I would have to move to the job. Now I just find I just move wherever I want, and I can find a job there. <laughs> Man, that you must know? have been so nice. Like I, I, the freedom, the uh, yeah, like the jobs were there. Just do you want it or not? You know. And and that was so different for me, man. Yeah. That was really different, and because of that, 
I went on interviews to jobs I knew I wasn't even going to take. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You're practicing your your skills for the jobs you did want to take. You wanted to get good at interviews and stuff. But yeah, because crazy. I was just like, man, screw this. You know, I can, I, I'm, I, people are reaching out to me now because mm -hmm. just because because I have that license. Yeah. You know, and that was that was so new. That was so different. Yeah. And finally, I was just I I worked at two companies. They sucked. Then I worked at another one. I was like, oh, I get to do some cool stuff here. So I just hung out there. I stayed there for like a year, mm -hmm. year and a half, I think it was. And I started back. I met I met a nurse practitioner there and he was like, yeah, man, um, you need to get your shit together and you're not going to where you are, where you're at right now, this is where you're going to be. You need to get your stuff together, go to paramedic school and just get it done. Cause the whole time he would hear me talk, he was, he's like, aren't you good? He, he would hear me say, you're going to, I'm going to go to paramedic school. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And what, and there's a lot of times when he would say to me like, so what, so what are you doing? What are you going to do? And I would blame everything I do on something else or on mm. somebody else, or okay. I can't do this because of that, or I can't do this because of that. And so one day he looked at me and he was like, Hey, can you just whatever, whatever, whatever reason it is you have as to why you haven't done the things that you wanted to do, just write it down on a piece of paper and let me see it. And I was like, what, are you serious? And he said, yes, just write it down on a piece of paper. For me. So I was like, okay. So I mean, I had a list of stuff. I wrote down like I'm I'm not where I want to be because because of my father. I'm not where I want to be because life sucks. I'm not where I want to be because I don't want to have any money. The <laughs> government. And I mean, I'm like Wakanda. <laughs> the uprising of Wakanda. Everything was on there, boy. Thanos coming down. I blame. Man, I'm telling you, bam, I blamed it on. I put a bunch of crap on there. And when he looked at the when he looked at the paper, he was like, wow, man, you have a lot of stuff on here. You know, I'm telling you, I even blamed shit on the fact that I had the I had my car payment was so high that I couldn't afford to do anything else, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was the so reason he that he was telling you to do this? What what did he So he looked at the list and he was just like he looked at the list and he was like, man, you have a lot of stuff on here. And he was like, and I said, yeah. And that's why I'm not where I want to be. And he said, I, there's one thing missing on there, though. And I was like, what? And he said, you, you're not on the list. And he, and he was like, you need to erase this list and then create another one and just put and just write your name on there. Damn. You know, because yeah. everything that you've done. You know, the only reason why you're not where you want to be is because of you. Damn. And I was just like, I was like, man, that, you know, that, that hit me. That, that made me feel some way, you know? That was real powerful, and, huh? You needed to hear yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it made me feel a way, man. Cause I knew that instead of, instead of blaming everything that I was doing on everybody else or on the system and whatever, it's like, he was basically saying you get you get out of you know you get out of things whatever you put into it you know and he was like the most important thing you can do for yourself is discipline like discipline yourself and then everything else is going to come once you know what you want and you set a goal for it and you just do it hmm. so and that's what that's what I did and I signed up for paramedic school and he also told me that if you if you know, if you know that you want to do something, then just go, just go fucking do it. Don't gnaw it over. Don't just go fucking do it. And so I signed up for paramedic school and tell you the truth, every paramedic school is a four semester and every semester I was on the president's list. I got, I got an A in every yeah. freaking semester. Badass, and, man. And I put, I took the, I took the, the paramedic state exam mm -hmm. and I pla I passed it with like flying colors man. the first time. I yeah, didn't man. take it, you know, and I didn't take it twice. You proud know? Of you. And yeah, proud of you. It's because really, you learned how to learn, you know, you taught yourself all yeah, that. And, and plus you got it you built up experience with everything yeah. else you were doing. So 
I learned how to learn. And that instructor, that instructor, because I didn't have the money to buy my book, well, not instructor, but that guy, nurse practitioner, because I didn't have the money to buy the books, he, the books was like 300 and something dollars. And one day, one day I went to work and he was like, hey, come out to my car with me. And he opened up his car, he opened up his trunk and he gave me the books, Wow, you know? So he gave me the books. Huh? He went and got them for you? Yeah, he bought them for me. (laughs) And I'm saying like, and because of that, right now, I'm I'm just trying to pay it forward, man. You know, because it was, it was so great. And because of that, now I'm, I'm in charge of my own ambulance. You know, anything, anything, any paramedic can do anywhere, you know, I I can do it, you know. And honestly, I three years ago or even four years ago, I would have never seen myself in this position. And right now, I can go anywhere and work, man. And it's just, and I'm just, I just feel, I know everything happened, you know, when it's supposed to happen, but I feel like I should have done this like a long time ago. Long time ago, yeah. yeah. You were searching, you were searching. You just had to find, find what it was for you. You got uh, to make a new lobby. Uh, if you have more to say, uh, let me know. If, let me just make a lot real quick. If they have questions, if they have some questions, like yeah. you know, pass them over. I'll definitely answer what I can. All right. Let me make a, a new lobby and I'll restate that as we. All right. Go. So you're just gonna hit me back? Yeah. All right. All right. So I need to pay for the service. Sorry, guys. I, I had a subscription and then I let it go because I wasn't doing the podcast. Uh, and. I made more work for myself because when I have this on at the end of the day on my YouTube, I got to edit all this shit out. Boo. But yeah, guys, if you guys are, are watching this, oh, hold on. Uh, if you guys are watching this now or in the future, like in the comments below or whatever, uh, if you have any questions for him, you know, feel free to ask him and I'm sure he'll go on a video and, and, and answer it for you. Um, and maybe even give you some of his social, uh, connections like his i don't know facebook uh whatever he might be on uh and maybe you can ask him directly i'm sure i'm pretty sure lonza would be down to answer anybody's questions uh like i said now or in the future uh let's get back to this second shot here there we go but uh yeah uh, i was just letting people know that if they want to even if they're watching this later on like in the future uh like the replay they can uh, okay. ask a question, and if I ever see one on there, I'll direct it to you on the uh, okay, cool. on the video. So yeah. now, now things are on the up and up. You're full fledged paramedic, which means you are in charge of the whole ambulance, and you have EMTs under you. Right? Yeah, well, more, I, I mean, you they I've heard this thing that they say is the difference between a paramedic and God mm-hmm. is that God doesn't think he's a paramedic. Because a lot of paramedics think that they're gods, like they could, they know more than the doctor <laughs> oh, and wow. stuff, you know. <laughs> you know, so now, but it's not. It's really you're you're in charge of the ambulance, yes. But if if you go in there thinking you're being really cocky and like, oh, I'm the boss, I'm this, and and I'm what, and so I don't usually do do that because mm-hmm. I I try my best to be you know humble, you know, and. Like, hey, whatever patients come on here, they're our patients, not just my patient, you know? And so, and you're never too old to learn mm-hmm. and never too young to teach, you know? And yeah. so that's how, that's how I kind of do it. That's like the best attitude to have. Actually, if more people would do that, it would be, yeah. you know, workplaces would be a lot better, a <laughs> lot easier to be at. Uh, so, yeah. And so I'll try to do that. But there are days, man, there are days when, like, you just want to, yeah, when you want to, like, example, I went to this airport. I had a call once to, a air, uh, to an airport. A uh, guy went to, guy went, he was, he, he, I mean, he had, they had money. He had a, they had their own, they had their own private jet and everything. And so what's it, hangar? It was like a little hangar that, you know, where you park your airplane in on mm-hmm. the, at the airport. Yeah. yeah, he had one of those. Wow. They went to Europe and they had a great time. He spent time with his family, came back, blew his brains out, man. Whoa. Yeah, just blew his brains out. Like in the airplane hangar, he ah. just blew his brains out. Family members came back and saw him there. But when I went up to him, it just it all looked so fake. 
Oh, so you yeah, walked in yeah. on that. That's the type of stuff you'd be seeing? Yeah, like, I mean, wow. that among, I mean, you name it, you know, wow. uh, that amongst a bunch of other things. I, it's, but the thing that I like, I like working with, I like having female partners. <laughs> Why is that? And because it's more so female partners because I, being a male, mm -hmm. um, if something happens, say, if like a guy, if a guy rape a female, you know, mm. they don't want another man there touching or coming up to him, talking to him when mm. they were just raped by a man, yeah. you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you have like a somebody of a, a, a different gender, you know, just come on and just try to console you, then you'll be more open to talking, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and getting the help. Because if it's just two guys, then yeah, you know, that's not really going to help. But make, make it worse. Yeah, you know, so they'll you'll see some stuff, man. That people, I've run calls on people that over in Florida, mm -hmm. overdose is crazy. If I hear, if I get a call saying this person is unconscious, if they're un unresponsive in their car, in their bathroom, in their bed, and if they if they say they're between the ages of like eighteen and sixty, mm. I'm automatically thinking it's an overdose. Damn, it happens that often or, or... The, dude, that's about a few times a day. Wow, really? Yeah. Damn. Automatically I thought that was... thinking is an overdose. I, and... I, I thought that was more of a, a rarity than, than that. No. Oh. <laughs> no no. It's people are overdosing off like every day multiple times i've ran calls on the same person that has overdosed like five times now okay so if it's repeat customers then uh it's definitely on purpose i was gonna say does it happen like accidentally but you're talking about repeat customers then, yeah uh, they, wow. bam i'm telling you i've had calls where i've gone to people that have um i they narcan parties what is that? Which is Narcan is the drug that you give to fight to combat the the opioid. Oh, okay. So if so, so like fentanyl, you know, a lot of the times you'll see them spraying it in the person's nose and stuff like that to bring them back. That's mm -hmm. the Narcan, and so they're doing it for fun. They're doing they they'll so they'll do so what the Narcan party is they'll do they'll do like fentanyl or whatever, mm -hmm. and if. If and when the person overdose, somebody there will give them Narcan. Damn, they're ready. They're prepared. Damn. So they're that bad that they have to have a, a plan A, B, and C. Yeah. Jesus. But now Narcan is free. A lot of places give Narcan out free. Because uh, so many people overdose right now that they're just giving it away free. So I wonder if that is a... I know they're trying to help, but I wonder if that's making the problem worse. They're like, hey, now we can have these parties all the time. <laughs> yeah oh, you know it, it it's horrible i've gone what i remember a couple a few months ago i went i went on a call with a lady she went out last night and this morning she came back her daughter 14 year old daughter found her in the bathroom like passed out naked you know um when there she had like five kids in the house including her 14 year old that found her almost dead and when you when you go up to a person, if they haven't been breathing for a while, so you they'll their lips, their fingertips and stuff, they it'll start turning blue, which is called cyanosis. Mm -hmm. And so it'll start turning blue to indicate that they have not been breathing for a while or not breathing adequately anyway. Wow. And we so she called and we go over there and we'll so we're going. Can you imagine seeing your parent like that, man? Like uh, almost dead? No, nah, man, you know? I, I can't, but that's, yeah, that would be a crazy sight, man. And you said there was but, like five kids in the house? Yeah, so uh. I would go, so I'm checking in the room while other medics are working on, on this lady. I go, <laughs> I'm checking in the rooms and looking just to see, just to make sure that everything is safe for mm -hmm. us to be there, you know, and I'm seeing there's one, there's two kids playing Xbox in the living room. And so it's like, I'm, if that was me and my mother was passed out almost dead in the other room, yeah. I'm freaking out. That's crazy, man. Like the, the sit, living situations that some people uh, have to go through, you know, like that might but, be so common. 
exactly uh, to like, them that they've, they've gotten like that before. or they were just so badly raised that they don't even care about anybody they, dude it's one or the other like and it's it not, was it was know. bad man it was really bad but whenever i leave i would go into another room and there's another kid laying sleeping <laughs> in the bed you know and yeah. i go into another one so she had a few kids in there and so we gave her narcan gave her narcan and she came back now when you give them narcan it doesn't it doesn't take long for them to come back you so a person passes out and you give them narcan they're like, <gasps> <laughs> really it works yeah. like that huh they just <gasps> you know they take a deep breath and come up and now they don't know what happened they have uh, no idea that they almost died that they're you know like they were almost pushing up daisies uh, <laughs> there for and and i'm usually the one that's there like hey calm down calm down so here's what happened you know trying to explain to them like hey you pretty much almost died mm -hmm. and what did what did you take and their first response usually is nothing <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you gotta but, you gotta hear that shit you know yeah and but and then my, my, usually i would just be like listen i'm not cop you know i'm not a police officer i'm not law enforcement or anything mm -hmm. so i want to know what you took so i can help you mm -hmm. because whatever you took might last longer in your body than the drug I'm, i gave you to fight it mm -hmm. so once the drug i give you i once the drug i give you to fight it wears off that drug, whatever it is that you took, is just going to come right back yeah. on you again. So you kind of have to just let me know what you took. And that sometimes they'll tell you. Sometimes <laughs> they're like, I didn't take anything, you know, and they mm -hmm. just blame it on something else. But it also other times you have to make sure you pat them down. Mm -hmm. Like you have to make sure you pat them down because they might have weapons on them. And because you ruined their high. They'll come back, come up, Damn. fighting, picking up, like punching. It's that bad, um, huh? Like that's how <laughs> that's how much they chase it. That like you ruin it for them, even though you just saved their life, they're gonna be angry at you. That's crazy. So it got, is bad. I got a question for you, man. And one of the things I was worried about whenever you were going into this, I don't know if I had ever told you or not. I was worried that you'd lose yourself because you've told me, um, you've told me about and this is off the podcast too like you told me about death you know you just told me about overdosing that you're seeing a lot of common yeah. miserable stuff that you're seeing I, I know a lot of stories that you've told me that would affect a lot of people and i know it's affected you in certain ways but i was worried when you were talking about doing all this that you would lose yourself you would lose your sense of humor you would lose um you would just become a different person because it would kill you on the inside uh yeah. but do you feel like it's affected you at all? Or you still feel like oh, you're yeah. the same person? Oh yeah, it has definitely affected me. Like not um, not as far as like like I know some stuff has happened and then you you go through it for like a couple of months. Uh, but then, um, like do you do you still are you still into the same type of stuff you were into before all this? Like the same type of geeky stuff you were into, uh, or, um, or the st stuff that you used to find funny? Do you still find it funny now? Or you know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't think I've changed much. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I still think that I'm. I, I still think that I'm like I like I used to be. You know, to some degree, but I know that I've definitely changed. Uh, I've that it has changed me. I start. I start. I see things a whole, a whole lot different now. I I I, I see that life is really fragile now. Mm -hmm. You know, is. Like you can just be going down the street right now and the lightning just strike you, you know, oh, and you're getting, cause I've seen that happen a few times, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen a guy riding on 95 in Florida, which is like, a, you know, uh, highway, uh, interstate, uh, goes all the way from Florida to I think New York. Yeah. He was going like 80 something. And lightning struck him on his on his motorcycle. Damn, you know? that was a, that was a pinpoint that like they it had a hard on for him, boy. It wanted to get him. He didn't care. <laughs> and, uh. and like now is a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing. I, I can I can laugh at a bunch of the stuff now. And mm. now when I see a dead body, it's like is 
is nothing really, so you know? It didn't, but it didn't kill you on the inside either to where you don't care about people or no. or because sometimes no. i get worried like like let's say cops cops see so many like let's say cops in big bad like cops in detroit or something they see so much bad all the time that they become yeah. jaded and they start hating yeah. people and they start not really valuing life that's what i was kind of worried about that might like that would be a path that you could go down yeah. but what you're saying is that no you see life as more fragile now <laughs> and uh there, you You'll see, I, I think peop, I'm seeing the way people are a lot more now than before. Like, pe I think people can be very evil. Like the things, I've seen kids that have cigarette burns on them. Wow. You know, kids that's been drowned. Uh, I, I've seen people that's been raped. Like you go, a lot of the trauma that I see, I don't, I don't feel like people should see this kind of trauma in their in their lives you know yeah yeah that's what i was worried about i was worried about you seeing it and taking that yeah in, you know i the, would be worried about anyone that i know or care about the, so. the last time when they had that shooting and i'm not i don't really remember the school shooting in texas yeah i know what you're talking about mm -hmm. um yeah when so one day i was driving i was driving to work and i saw the the flag was kind of I think I think you say it half flash or something like that. Half mass. Half yeah. mass, yeah. Yeah. Um, I I I was like, why the hell is the flag like that? What you know, what are we remembering now? And so I just kind of I just Googled it. I just like, hey, you know, on my phone while I was driving, and I Googled it and Google told me the reason why it's like that is yeah. because of the shooting. And then it started telling me about what happened dude while i was driving i started i started crying man you know mm, i started yeah. crying and the thing is it, i wasn't even crying more so for i wasn't crying more so for the the parents which was sad or even mm. the students mm. which was sad but just from my perspective now i started crying because of all the the firefighters and the paramedics that that pull up on that scene and then they go yeah. into go in there and they see that yeah because i'm thinking to myself if i go into one of those buildings and i see all those kids that's been shot and you know their bodies are piled up in there and like i don't know yeah. how, I could, how i would deal with that you know no i understand so, you're basically thinking of all uh, i would say like your brothers that are doing the same thing you're doing yeah. you know like they're i mean you could easily be you and like that yeah. would stick with you the rest of your life like just hearing that story like what you're saying that definitely affected me just now but uh yeah. when i heard about what had happened over there i couldn't sleep i would wake in the wake up in the middle of the night thinking about everyone involved basically like you know because me and you we both have kids now right we both have yeah. you have a daughter i have a daughter and a son and just the whole i felt bad for the parents you know the kids like just man i just kept seeing these images in my head and i just kept waking up so I, I I commend you on being able to do what you do at all, like being able to see this type of, you know, even though you haven't seen that, you've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I don't know how you do it. Ben, I'm I'm telling you, man, it's there. There are days they have they have things like counselors we can go to, we can talk to about the things that we see to help us cope with it. Because, uh, and a lot of people, a lot of people might not even notice. But the suicidal rates for paramedics, firefighters, and stuff is mm. really high in the oh, United States. Oh wow! I didn't it's know that. Like I didn't know yep. that at all. I just thought, you know, they're they just get used to it, and then yep. you it's know. really high because wow. they we, you see so much and you don't know how to cope or you don't know how to deal with it. Mm. So you just they plenty of firefighters and EMTs and paramedics kill themselves because of the things that they see. So they're now we're spending a lot of time on if you on mental health, you know, like mm. you, if there's something, talk about it, take time off, you know, yeah. and, but it, that's, that's true. That's true. Mental health. Like I know a lot of people like to go on the internet and talk about how sad, how sad they are and mental health and this and that. They're just going through regular things, but I can imagine what like paramedics are going through, like what they're, they're seeing on a daily. Yeah. And, it's, uh, but bam, it's bad, man. When you're seeing like when you're and I, I hope I never get like this. When you when you get to the point where you're seeing one person, you know, 
one person overdose five times. And every time you talk to them, every time you say something to them about it, it's like, hey, um, you know, you really need to go get help. You need to go get help because you're going to, you're going to, nobody's going to find you one time and that's that's going to be your last time you know and it happens it happens again and again and it's it's horrible especially when they have kids and everything it wow. it's it man so yeah but yeah, yeah. the i'm i'm happy I'm a, I'm a paramedic to tell you the truth because i just i like i like the fact that majority of the time when i show up mm-hmm. people are happy to see me yeah yeah because you're like uh, in a moment like that that's the main person you want to see um uh, it's i'm really it's it's nice because but i've also been on scenes where and there's to me in the the racial i'm gonna come out with a whole racial part of it now Mm. like being here especially being in america you cannot ignore this so for working in the black communities and stuff Mm. it's like you see when something happened to us it's nice sh- when a black person show up oh you yeah. know so, mm-hmm. right and so i've been on scene where, and this one stands out distinctly to me that i i went on a scene that there was a man like really skinny he was like a a buck a buck 10 maybe you know a buck 10 probably and he was like 5'11", above 10. So you know he's like really skinny. He was diabetic. And when a person is diabetic and their blood sugar drop, they're, they don't know what's going on. Mm. They don't know what's going on. They don't know, you know, they're about to pass out. They're both about to go into a coma. And this, but this guy had no idea what he was doing or whatever. So we went on scene. And there were cops there saying, white cops, they're saying that this guy's fighting them. This guy's fighting them. They're going to, they want to make sure that this guy is, they want to take him down. Wow. You know? And I'm like, listen, this guy, he has a history of diabetes. It's a, you know, we held him down, checked his blood sugar. Blood sugar is really low, like some, some low in the 40s, something, wow. some low number. And and it should be between 60 and 120, right? We checked it and come to find out it was super low. And we were, after we checked it and we're just trying to just kind of like, hey, okay, so help me so I can get an IV on him so I can give him the medication that he needs. And they they weren't trying to do that. Wow. So what, what these assholes did, they decided the best thing to do was to tase the guy. Now yeah. this guy is he's, he's just he he as I said he was like a buck ten man yeah. and he was really tiny. So they just they tased him and he like I don't know if you've ever seen anybody tased, but once he was tased he I mean telling you he dropped like a log. Wow. You know he, he just fell down and after he fell after he fell, I, I was, I, I, I couldn't believe that they tased him. You know, I couldn't believe that they tased him. So finally, my partner and I held him down. So we were able, and I was able to get, get a line on him. I was mm-hmm. able to get an IV on him, and I gave him, gave him some dextrose, which is the drug, which is basically sugar, okay. to kind of push his, push mm-hmm. his sugar back up. Okay. And after, bam! After his sugar went back up, this guy came around nicest guy you would wow. ever meet That's nicest cool. guy you would ever meet and he was just like and he found he, we told him mm-hmm. what happened and he was like oh my god i'm so sorry he was apologetic he was uh-huh. like this has happened to him is whenever his blood sugar gets low mm-hmm. he said he took too much of his insulin yeah. his blood sugar got low he didn't mean it he's so sorry he apologized and and all of that I, he was such a kind person you know yeah. like say a month later the same incident white lady white lady fighting us right cop no tase or nothing wow that's These fucked cops, up nicest mm-hmm. cops to this lady they could and and it's like man. like where do you you know it it, it fucking sucks man yeah. to know that we're in we're almost in fucking 2030 
mm-hmm. you know and it's like stuff like that is still happening and that shit that really pisses me off like yeah. they they really are out there treating people different like and like you said the guy was so fragile he was in such a yep. f- vulnerable state and they still and he could have fell easily fell and died by hitting his head or yeah. something right exactly when they tased them mm-hmm. but that's not that's not that's not it man they i don't know it, it, it's just weird you know it's weird that you have and then you pick up then i'll, I'll, I'll get calls on people that are just that are just so immediately say if i say if i have a white partner mm-hmm. immediately when i go say my partner is usually an emt so when i when i get a call to go to the person's house and or go over there immediately as soon as we go in there they start talking to my partner uh-huh. you know, which, is, which is the emt emt and, and you're the paramedic <laughs> oh. right and i'll introduce myself like hey uh my name is lanza i'm a paramedic here to help you you know and they immediately start talking to my partner right because he's white uh-huh. and he's gonna now he can't do shit to help anyone <laughs> he can't do anything <laughs> to help him that's the that's the crazy part he can't do nothing to help him you know mm-hmm. but if i don't if i don't say okay it's okay do that yeah he, he can't do any of it wow. because the the way that the way it works is that the person that have the highest license mm-hmm. is in charge you know so they can talk whatever it is that they want to <laughs> talk to him but all of it has to, it's all about what I say, you know? And, does that burn, and does just, that, does that burn you up when you do that? Does it like no, at, irritate at, you? At first, at first it did. Uh-huh. At first it did, but I'm just like, you know what? Igno- ignorance, I always hear people say ignorance is bliss, mm-hmm. you know? And ignorance is not bliss, you know? Because all these people, if they knew, if yeah. they, yeah, if they, it's just the way that they were raised. No. I've even gone to people's houses where, they didn't want me to come in. Damn. Yeah, they didn't. They called for help, but they did not want me to come in because I was black. Damn, that's fucked up, man. Yeah. I, and, I didn't even think about that part. I didn't think you were even going. I didn't think about you going through that because I, I was like, if you see somebody wearing uh, a uniform like you're wearing, you're like happy regardless, no. uh, you know, to see that person regardless of, you know, what stupid, uh, like, uh, prejudices they might have but nope it still doesn't doesn't deter them that, dude i've seen that nigger ain't coming in here <laughs> really straight up <laughs> and, I'm just, and i'm just like well i guess that nigger ain't coming in there because you I, I am not and this is the that's the nigger that can help you <laughs> <laughs> um so you're saving people in two ways i would say like not only are you giving them the medical attention that they need and possibly saving them in that moment, but you're also saving them in situations like what you said with that one guy, because if y'all would have let the uh, cops tase them and then not even stepped in, they would have probably continued to be violent to the guy, even though he was knocked yeah. down on the ground. Like you yeah, de- most definitely. defused the situation. Uh, you, if they would have let you, you could have defused it sooner. You know? Yeah, if they, if they would have just listened, you know, if they would have just listened and, and just say, instead of being in their ego, mm-hmm. and I feel like it was just racially driven, yeah. you know, because if it was, if it wasn't, I think if it wasn't a black guy, they probably, let's just say a, a Caucasian person, they would have probably did what they did with that, with the white lady yeah. and just went on and, you know, help us hold the person down so I can get a line on them to give them give them the drug that they needed to, so, to come back. So I got one more question for you. Uh, I mean, we could go on for like two, three more hours just on stories alone. Cause I know you have a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> is there any funny stories that you'd want to, uh, oh. let us know about? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> At all? Uh, I, I know so, one I'd like to hear or like to have other people here, but it's all up to you, man. I don't know what you want to see on camera. Because, okay. you know, this is so all your there personal is, life so <laughs> there is one that so i went on one call and um on this call i don't know if this if i told you this one you told me two but, that were pretty funny one of them might have been in the clinic though the other one i, I think was on call <laughs> so this call i went on it was it was a man and we got a call saying 
the person called because he had he had shortness of breath, you know, difficulty breathing, whatever. Mm. We finally showed up to this person's house, knock on the door, no answer. So I something just said, you know what? Just try to open the door. And I opened the door and I pushed the push door open. When I looked, when I looked in the house, there was this man, like naked man. And now when these people overdose, for some reason, they always overdose naked. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Like when somebody's yeah. dying, 90% of the time they're they're naked when they're dying. <laughs> you know? So don't know why. If it's like a thing that everybody get together and say, but at, say they're gonna do, but anyway. So when when we got into this guy's house, I walked in, and when I walked in, the guy was turning blue. He was blue on the couch, unresponsive. And and usually when you see a person that's unresponsive, you would like, sir, 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 sir. You know, mm-hmm. hey, can you hear me Apple. or whatever? And he's not saying he doesn't say anything. You check a pulse, and you find out that he doesn't have one. So you try your best to start doing chest compressions or whatever on him, and. Now, before I can even get to start doing compressions on the on the guy, I see this big ass white dog, like a great dame. I don't mm. know. Do you know what a great dame? Looks yeah, like? yeah. They're like the side of a horse, <laughs> basically. <Yeah. laughs> they, got, yeah. they come to you chest high, like yeah, you're standing. Yeah, it was huge. And so, basically, when you get on scene. This your safety and your partner's safety is the utmost thing. That's mm-hmm. the first foremost. So I saw the and the dog just started walking towards me like, <laughs> you know, and started growling at me. And I was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I put both my hands up and I was like, sorry, dog, wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> Back up. Wrong house. So what I did was I just put my hands up and I just backed out, backed out to the to the door. Uh-huh. I backed out and went into the went into the went out front and just closed the door right behind me. <laughs> and we were so I was just standing out there. I was just standing out there for a while waiting on the cops to show up mm-hmm. because so they can, you know, take the dog out of the way. So I can because I'm not gonna put myself in danger, you know, yeah. just to go get just to go help the guy. Mm-hmm. And so the cops finally came and we went there. So come to find out, long story short, come to find out the guy, he had peanut butter all oh, over it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, con- sorry, I cut you off there, but continue. He had peanut butter where? He had peanut butter all over his junk and <laughs> the great dame was licking it off. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you, the, turns out the dog thought you were after that peanut butter too. <laughs> you ain't getting none of my peanut butter. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, peanut butter, and the dog was licking it off. He had you. You remember um, Pulp Fiction? Yeah, yeah. And when um, you know, it's like when I, I don't remember. Remember Zed? And it was like, nah, baby, Zed is dead. Mm-hmm. Well, remember the guy Zed at down in the basement with the gimp outfit on, like the black outfit suit yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had one of those in there, and there was gay oh. porn on the TV. <laughs> was he wearing it? Like halfway wearing it? No, no. He, he had, had a there. room with all that stuff oh, in there. Wow. Yeah, with kind of with a bunch. I'm not. I'm sure one that somebody you know that's watching this will be able to tell what it's what their room is called or whatever. Oh, but my goodness, he had one of those rooms, and so he had a lot of stuff that mm-hmm. he did. But there was peanut butter on his junk, and yeah. so he had, he went into cardiac erect, erect cardiac arrest during that during that uh, what he was doing with a dog, like so I, I would or he overdosed so. or he overdosed breathing. he overdosed He's... as that was happening. That's what he said. It was an overdose, right? No, no, it wasn't an overdose. No, this wasn't an overdose. He went into cardiac arrest, you know, and he just. He just, whatever he was doing, I don't know. You know, I'm not speculating or anything here, but whatever he did, I'm not sure. He just stopped breathing and everything. And we <laughs> went back to try to try to bring him back. That was, so I'm just kind of telling you what I found. Mm-hmm. And you can put, wow. you, can, you can put everything together yourself. Did he make it? So, did he make it? 
Mm-hmm. We brought him to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, we brought him back. I guess we brought him back once. He went, you know, he went, he coded again. And by coded, I mean just cardiac. He went mm-hmm. in cardiac arrest again. And so when we brought him, when we took him to the hospital, he didn't have a pulse. And they said that they got a pulse back on him. But usually you don't really hear about them after you drop them off. Yeah. You know, so, but that was pretty much it for, for that guy. And I kind of thought that was, that was definitely, that was pretty funny. You know? <laughs> yeah, that was definitely pretty funny. Uh, With the so we're going to probably have to do a part two on this, man, because I know there's there's probably a ton of stuff you could tell us. If you ever want to do one, you know, continue talking about this. Uh, okay. The good takeaway from this, though, is uh, you're definitely happy with the decision you made. Yeah. Turned yeah. your life around, went from VFX to EMT to paramedic and beyond, yeah. basically. Uh, yeah. And um, so, but to end it all, I'm, uh, I'm doing my, I'm doing my prereqs now for nursing. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? So, so what does that mean exactly? So prereqs, like just doing like because all the my credits from ITT tech didn't transfer over. <laughs> so I basically have to do all of those classes again. Wow. And uh, it it's just horrible. And I've spoken to the government about it and they're <laughs> like, Yeah, you know, sucks for you. <laughs> Damn. But so- I gotta do it all over again it sucks and i know but i just kind of made my mind up like it that's what it's gonna be and i'm gonna have to do it and so i'm just i'm just doing it and so, so hopefully probably in the next two years or a year and a half or even a year i'll be a you know a nurse and then um like i who knows who knows but yeah. i'm not gonna stop you know going so there's more it. more studying in the future yeah wow and what and, um, and the nurse thing why did you want to do? Why did you want to go that far to be a nurse now? Because uh, I remember you wanted to, at at a certain point you wanted to just do the paramedic thing. Now you want yeah. to now you want to go up to being a nurse or just a second. Like why why that? Yeah, I want to. You get well, money is better, mm. you know, as a nurse, and you do you work in a hospital and you can. I want to be. I want to send eventually to be a nurse practitioner. You know, okay. yeah. and this is kind of like you write prescriptions and stuff, you know, and so and you make a shit ton of money as a nurse practitioner, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. um, that's that's kind of where I'm I'm leaning towards, you know. But I moral is for me, it was a really good idea to leave the role of visual effects, you know, and I'm happy I did. Oh man, that's that's good. It's yeah. a good ending, happy ending. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a happy ending. I feel like it's more like a beginning. The beginning, (laughs) okay, yeah, beginning. Yeah, Yeah, that's a better way to look at it. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm. I would definitely. I would love to do another one. You know, we can have uh, you know ill will on. Yeah, he was planned on to do. He was planned to uh, be on here today, but uh, you know, I guess he found a can of peanut butter and uh, (laughs) went to that room. (laughs) Old boy, we had. Yeah. (laughs) Peanut butter and a great name. Yeah, but a yeah. great day. All right, man. That was awesome. That turned out great. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one. This has been my buddy. I don't know if you want me to say your full name, but my buddy Lanza. Lanza. And uh, AKA the Jamaican. And this has been That's the, right. uh, the BAMcast. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Dap that down up, that that down up, down down up, down down up, down up, that down up, that up, that down up, that down up, that down up, down 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 down up,